you deserve it. Lord, you deserve it. You deserve it. Receive it all for you. Serve it, Lord. Come on, let the Lord hear you all over the building. Just lift your voices. Come on. Come on, lift your voices. Come on, lift your voices. Come on, all over the room, lift your voices. Come on, just lift your voices. The glory of the Lord is here. Lift your voices. Hallelujah. You deserve the glory. You've been good to us, Lord. We lift our voices in praise and adoration unto you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We honor your presence. Hallelujah. You're a great God. You're the great king in all the earth and we honor you. And you have been good to us. You've been very good to us. And we give you praise. And we give you glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Receive our worship, Jesus. understand Speak to our hearts. 
Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Wow. Wow. Hallelujah. 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 Just lift your hands and receive. Just lift your hands and receive. In the glory and worship him and receive. Just lift your hands and receive. Oh,
shall praise His Lord for you're the Holy One. For you're the Holy One. You're the Holy One. You're the Holy One. Hallelujah. We will bow in your presence, Lord. To worship you, we will lay in your presence, Lord, to honor you. We honor you, Jesus. We honor you, Jesus. We honor you, Jesus. We honor you, Jesus. Yes. 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 Yes, I, in the night, yes, hallelujah. Oh, heavy oil, heavy oil, heavy oil. Oh, heavy oil, heavy oil. It's flowing now. Hallelujah. We honor his presence. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You've been so good to us, Father, and we thank you for this moment in time, this moment that we have in your presence. And we honor you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the Lord heard you, my sister. You, he heard you. And I heard the Lord, and he kept speaking to me. And I heard the Lord say, never doubt your anointing. And I heard the Lord said, because you have sought me in the quiet place, in the hidden place, I'm going to do great things for you and through you. He said, I've anointed you for this hour. Don't doubt your gifting. Because it is real what you see. And about the 2 to 4.30 hour, when you start seeing those pictures, does that make sense? Does that make sense? things start coming to you or sometimes you walk by a person and it seems like their whole thing unfolds it's because you are anointed for this hour hallelujah and you say Lord what do I say he's going to give you words to speak and I heard the Lord say whatever you ask me I will do it I'm going to honor your prayers Hallelujah. My favor and 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 my favor rest upon you. There is nothing too small nor nothing too big that I won't do for you. Ask of me and I'll give you the desires of your heart. I heard the Lord say to tell her, I'm going to bless her with the things that she's thought about and even haven't asked me for. I'm that kind of God that's going to do it for her. Hallelujah. And the prayers that you have laid before him, this is the season that you will see them manifest. Somebody praise the Lord. <laughs> I heard you. I heard the Lord say, I heard you. And I'm moving in your behalf. Come on, bless the Lord. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9. Hallelujah. I got seven minutes. I think I can do it. <laughs> Matthew. 
chapter 9, verse 37, because it is the gospel, can we all stand and honor it? Matthew chapter 9, verse 37 and 38. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then therefore, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Thus far, the scripture lesson, you may be seated. I want to share for a few moments from this thought, empowered to serve, empowered to serve. Jesus makes it very clear to his disciples and to you and I what their mandate would be. Bring lost people into the kingdom. And that mandate, my brothers and sisters, has not changed for you and I. We have been empowered to serve. As we move forward towards the earth's greatest harvest of souls, we must begin asking ourselves how we can prepare for and facilitate this harvest. It will not occur simply because God wills it to happen. He will do it through us, the church. And it will not occur just because we preach the gospel with our mouths. We will need to preach it with our hearts and our actions. We will have to preach it with our hearts and with our actions. It was once said, preach the gospel at all times and when necessary with your mouth. We are in a season of accelerated change. And it will take bold faith to enter into the stream of the Lord. The river of God is flowing from the very throne room to his people. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ must ascend high and stand in the mountain and declare that Jesus is Lord to all the earth. Not just within these four walls, but in every area that God calls us to, we must declare Jesus is Lord. In the boardrooms, in the classrooms, in the mechanic shops, in the grocery stores, wherever God has placed you, you must now allow your anointing to rise, be sensitive to the spirit, and allow God to intuitively speak a word to you that will bring salvation to all. You are anointed, empowered, and gifted to do great things in the midst of God's people. There is, this is not happenstance, that there is a heavy glory in the room. God says, I want the glory to rest on you and not just rest on you. I want you to part this room and to begin to serve and allow my miraculous power to flow through you as you go out into the communities and into the places where you abide and allow my power to flow through you. I activate on the inside of you every potential I see speak to the potential inside of you. I speak to every gift and calling of the Father on your life and I command it to come to flourishing now. I stir up within you. Hallelujah. Lay your hands on yourself and say, God, use me now. Say, use me now. And if you believe he's going to use you, give him the greatest praise you have given him all morning. Because the hand of Almighty God is on your life. You didn't come through hell just to sit here. You didn't have the trauma in your life and came through it not to be a blessing to somebody else. But God gave you a testimony that you can bring deliverance to men, women, boys, and girls. You say me. God says you. I empowered you to serve. I empowered 
wanted you to serve. I placed an anointing on your life to bring breakthrough in healing. Anybody believe it, give God glory. And I want you to know I don't see a room just the people sitting here. I see people who are blood washed and anointed. I see people that have been through the storm and the rain and say I have survived the storm. I see people that say that the devil thought he had me but I got away. I, the trauma tried to take me out. The disappointment tried to destroy me but there's something greater on the end side that says I survived it and because I survived it I've got an anointing on me uh, to destroy the yokes uh, I've got an anointing on me uh, to set the captives free I've got an anointing on me to declare that Jesus is Lord oh I feel scared I feel the anointing. Hallelujah. Whew. Two minutes. Two minutes. You have been empowered to serve. Lord, help me cut through here. Woo, Jesus, help me, help me, help me. I'm truly excited. If you can't tell, if you're not excited, catch some of my excitement. Hallelujah. You know why I'm excited? Because the enemy tried to do everything to disturb me from the moment. And I'm not just talking about this Sunday. I'm talking about my moment in time with God. He tried to do everything to keep me from the moment. But then I woke up and realized there was something inside of me that said it's not going to keep me from the moment. It's going to command me to stand in my moment and rejoice in the power of God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Do I have any believers that's ready for it? Do I have anybody that survived some stuff? Do I have anybody that feel like they're anointed for this moment? Anybody ready to go after some things? I'm talking about setting the captives free. Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name. There is no doubt that we're in a community that needs Jesus there is no doubt that we're in a community that despair and hopelessness and frustration is seen on the lives of many but I want you to know we've got the answer hallelujah though we can see with our natural eyes the hopelessness and the despair we need to see people with the eyes and through the eyes of God we need to see them being set free from the bondage of the enemy. We need to see them improve their God-given identity. We need to see their self-image repaired. We need to walk intimately with Jesus. And we need to release his power in their lives. I want you to know something. God has put a word in every one of your mouths. I said God put a word in every one of your mouths. Hallelujah. God spoke to Moses face to face. Hallelujah. The scripture says Israel knew God by his actions. But Moses knew God by his ways. I pray every day, Lord, teach me your ways. That me may walk in his. Come on, let's try. Teach me your. That we may walk in your. Let's try it again. Teach me your, that we may walk in your. God wants to teach us his ways. And when he teaches his ways, and when you talk about that scripture that says face to face, I'm going to preach that message real, real soon because it's in my spirit. It really talks about not face to face as much as it says mouth to mouth. God spoke to Moses mouth to mouth. And when I read that, it reminded me of mouth to mouth resuscitation Woo, Jesus God hallelujah that when I need breath and I seem like I'm dead somebody puts their mouth to me and revive me 
Well, I want you to know men and women, boys and girls are out there and they're dying. They need somebody with a word in their mouth. Somebody that will bring deliverance to the captive. Somebody that will breathe into them and bring them life. You are empowered. You are empowered to serve. Somebody say, I am empowered to serve. If you believe it, say yes. See us again. See, there's some things that you already know about God. You know that God exists and he created the universe out of nothing. If you believe it, say amen. You believe that Jesus is fully God, say amen. You believe Jesus is truly human, say amen. You believe Jesus died on the cross, say amen. If you believe Jesus rose again, shout glory. If you believe that he saved you one day, shout praise the Lord. If you believe he saved you for a purpose, say glory. And if you believe salvation is still for everybody, man, woman, boy, and girl, say Lord, save now. You and I are empowered to serve. I've got a lot more to say, but I'm closing my notes because... I was only supposed to preach seven minutes and I did 18. <laughs> Hallelujah. But we are empowered to serve. Today is Community Evangelistic Outreach Sunday. And as we prepare to get ready to go into the streets, to those areas that we've assigned, we've been assigned to work in, we're believing God to do great things. Amen? Amen. Is anybody excited? I want you to understand that Jesus is going to use you to do some great things, to love on people who need love, to listen to somebody, just to say hello. Do you, do you know what a smile and a kind word can do to a person? Who knows how God's going to use you? One planet. One watereth, but God brings the increase. And if he did it for us, Sister Helen, he's going to do it for them. I am stirred within to know that God is up to something great. And I'm glad that he decided to allow Kingdom Life Cathedral Ministries to be a part of what he's doing in the earth. We never think that we are the only ones. We just want to do what he's assigned our hands to do. We're not trying to be the best church. We just want to fulfill the call of God on our lives. That's a good place to say amen. amen. Now, we are the best because we serve the best, but we're not the only one serving the best. I can't get no help here now. No, I'm not talking bad of my church. The reality is we're not the only soul-saving station, but we are one that God is using in the earth. Amen? And we're a part of a bigger picture and we're sharing with others. I believe that God has called this house to be an apostolic regional center. And that means this. We're called to influence the region. We're called to set some things in order within our region. And we do it by the anointing of God on our lives. You see, things are rapidly changing. The church's sphere of influence must go beyond its four walls and it must reach the community. It must be able to reach people who are not like us without losing our own identity. Amen. We must be able to understand those that are not like us. Respect, appreciate them. But never change who we are as the people of the Lord Jesus Christ. The church must rethink a lot of things. We must rethink. To rethink is to repent. It is to change. And he's calling the church in this hour to rethink a lot of things 
that we can reach those who are waiting to come. There is an untapped harvest, I believe, that has not been reached. There is a group of people that have not been reached. And God has called you and I to reach them. Amen? Amen. Let's all stand in his presence. I, I want to say a special, special, special thanks to my dear friend and brother who shared with us this morning at the last hour to lead us. Amen. Amen. And let's celebrate the gift. We love him dearly. <laughs> Dr. Swan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you, man. We appreciate you. Hallelujah. We appreciate you and esteem you highly. Amen. And we honor him. Amen. He, he and Shelly are always a part of us. Amen. And we love you. Hallelujah. And thank God for you. Amen. And I'm so grateful to him. How many of you glad you came this morning? Let's remember what's going to happen today. There are some things where you can go and refresh yourself. The team leaders are here. Um, and I'm going to ask them if they could come this way, walk this way. Amen. Elder Michael Jewell, can you come? Uh, Sister uh, Brenda Gaskins and Elder Tanya Armstrong. So you'll know who the team leaders are. And they'll be meeting with you. Let's say, can we meet with the team at 1030? Amen. Sister Brenda Gaskins, hold your hand up. Amen. Sister Brenda Gaskins will be meeting with those who are going to Building 5, which is the senior building at Willow Springs. Amen. Amen. Um, the apartment complex team leaders are not here. They're setting up and working. That's why they're not in the sanctuary. Um, and that is... Deacon Shalonda Winston and brother George Johnson. Amen. Those of you that are on that team, you can see me. Amen. And then our nursing home team is Pastor Michael Jewell. And then those that will be going to the Walmart parking lot, uh, uh, our pastor elect, uh, Tanya Armstrong. Amen. I'm excited. Listen. Take a few minutes to refresh yourself and then at 1025, come back in this room um, for some directions and then we'll have final impartation and prayer upon you and we're going to be released. Those of you that are watching in the, in the virtual sanctuary, if you signed up for a team, it's a good time now to put them shoes on, get in that car and start moving to your area of ministry. Amen. For those, what I want you to do, go refresh you. There's some continental, there's a continental breakfast in the lobby. Amen. Please go and share. Um, take these 15 minutes. Meet me back in this room at 1030. Is that all right? Amen. To those in our virtual sanctuary, blessings and love to you. Amen. I love you with the love of God. We're praying for you. And know this, that God is for you and he's more than the whole world against you. Amen. My mom is. Mike down. Listen, the blessings of the Lord be upon you and let's be blessed. God bless you. Repeat after me what I say unto one. I say unto all. Watch. Hug your neighbors and consider yourselves dismissed. Please.